In terms of my experience as a rower, I actually began as a walk-on in college. Um, it was 1974, which was the year of Title IX, and uh, they started women's rowing at Brown. And a whole bunch of us who were swimmers walked on, and I rode through college, and then I rode after college and all the way through medical school. So I competed nationally and internationally until I started my, my internship. It's an interesting sport, but I was a swimmer, which is obviously a solitary sport. And when I got in the boat, it was magical to me. You were in a team boat in college, um, but being out on the water instead of having your face in a pool all day long <laughs> was very appealing to me. And then after college, I transitioned to small boats, to the single and the double. Competing at an elite level took me a long time uh, to get to. I was a varsity athlete in college, uh, but when I got to the national level, it took four to five years to really come to that top point. And I was a lightweight rower, and lightweight rowing was not an international event until 1984. And so that was the first year that I made the national team. And it was amazing because I had trained for a very long time. I was 29 years old. Um, and so it all finally paid off. And then I continued to race one more year, um, but had to start my internship. But I turned my love of rowing into my work as a physician and was a, the head team physician for US Rowing for many years, overall a team physician for 28 years. And so I understood what the athletes were going through. They respected what I had done and it made for another great piece of team. I think the biggest misconception about rowing is that it's all arms. People say, oh, you row, and they go, oh, you do this, and you go, well, there's a lot more to rowing. Rowing is a total body sport. So really, your arms are used to anchor the oar, but your legs are the major driving force for everything you do, because you come up into compression at your hips and your knees. Your back transmits that load to your arms, which then transmits the load to the oar. So it really is an, a total body exercise. It's also, I think, only second to uh, cross-country skiing in terms of the calorie expenditure uh, per unit time. The athletes tend to have very large vital capacity. They have to be strong, uh, but they have to have endurance, and they also have to have some ability to sprint. So the first 30 or 40 strokes of the race is really a sprint to get the boat going. And then there's endurance through the middle of the race, and then there's a very intense sprint for the last minute or so. But the most common injuries in rowing are uh, stress fractures of the rib, and that has to do with the muscles that attach to your shoulder blade, and your shoulder blade is a linkage point for when you're pulling through the water. The second thing that rowers uh, get also related to overload is low back pain and disc uh, herniations. And again, that is probably somewhat genetic, but it's also related to the volume of training. I had one very significant injury that ultimately led to becoming an orthopedic surgeon. So back in the old days, uh, we did not have rowing ergometers around by the hundreds like you see in every gym and, and every college program. So in the winter, we cross-trained with cross-country skiing because again, it's a total body activity. So I had gone up to Vermont uh, for a training trip with my husband, who was also a rower, and took a bad fall coming down a hill and had a really bad knee injury, had to have surgery, and in those days, they put you in a cast afterwards. So I was in a cast, and my rowing coach actually rigged a sling from the ceiling of the boathouse so that I had my leg in a sling, and they found an ergometer for me to row on, and I trained with this one leg just floating off to the side. <laughs> But the surgeon who did my surgery really tried to keep me motivated and worked with my coach actually, what upper body work I could do, what I could do with my, other, with my back and other leg. Uh, but I was starting to do clinical rotations. And the trials for the World Championships in 1984 were held in Tennessee in June. And I had a one month elective. So I called the orthopedic surgeon who had reconstructed my knee and explained that I had this one month and could I come and do an elective with him? And oh, by the way, I had to leave for four days in the middle of it to go to trials. And he thought that was the greatest thing in the world. I spent a month with this Dr. Levy and I completely fell in love with orthopedic sports medicine. 
I went to the World Championships. That was the year I won a silver medal at the World Championships and then applied for orthopedics. My injury literally changed my, the course of my academic life. I love watching the Olympic Games. So obviously rowing will be at the top of my list. Um, I love watching swimming. Uh, women's gymnastics captures me and women's basketball. So I, I took care of the New York Liberty for 15 years and two of the Liberty athletes were playing on the women's team. And our athletic trainer who works with the Liberty is the athletic trainer for USA Basketball for the women. So I watch all those games too. <laughs>